The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the divine health and in the divine energy that he has given to us, to clearly sustain under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to stay in the sure place, which is the place of, which is the place of divine dinosphere, in order to make that we should be pegged, or in fact even nailed in that place, and to be day by day learning of the word of the Lord, could be stabilized or could be established to get God's glory. And furthermore, in this stabilization process, we need to know that this glory to the praise of Him should be very much true to the Father in heaven. Dear brethren, the true purpose of us being kept alive even after salvation on this earth is to give number one priority for Bible doctrine, to learn the word of the Lord, to know our Lord's mind, to understand his thinking, to look upon the truth and really know what it is to really be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Dear brethren, many of the people today, the 25th of March 2016, they think Good Friday as the day where our Lord has been crucified. Of course, it is not Good Friday, but it has to be Good Wednesday. But as they have not made very clearly known, rather than Good Wednesday, rather than Good Friday, it has to be Good Wednesday. So as such, even the things what they speak about, the seven phases of our Lord, they have not clearly and truly understand, and they are just going to proclaim the things pertaining to their legalism or carnality or self-righteous attitude and they think this is what the Good Friday is. Dear brethren, in order to review, as we have taken several tapes answering back Zakir Naik whether my Lord has been crucified or not, we have much more things to be taught. In that today, if it could be the world following as the crucifixion of our Lord, we need to know the chronology of the crucifixion. Point number one, the procession arrived at Golgotha, Matthew 27:33. Jews was offered a stupefying drink of vinegar and gall, which our Lord refused, Matthew 27:34. Our Lord was crucified between the two thieves. Then his first cry on the cross was, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The soldiers gambled for his clothes, as was the Roman custom, Romans 27, Matthew 27, 35. The Jews began to mock him, Matthew 27, 39 to 43. The thieves began to rail upon him, but then one of them believed, Luke 23, 39 to 42. Our Lord cried the second utterance or the second phrase, which he said, Today you shall be with me in paradise. Our second cry was uttered. And then, seeing to the care of his family, his third cry was, Woman, behold your son. From that day on, Apostle John would care and provide for Mary as his own mother. At exactly 12 o'clock upon the noon, darkness fell upon all the land, the hill at Golgotha. This was followed by his fourth cry, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is nothing but, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And our Lord's fifth cry, I am thirsty, was so that we might never thirst, as told in John 19:28. And this fifth cry of an exemplification of the point, which we have been explaining several, several, several tapes, I think may are more than 1,000 tapes over here which we have been teaching about the fifth cry, the cry which our Lord has told, I am thirsty, which shows the scripture love of our Lord, his realization, his reverence, his observance, so that it is the desire of Lord God the Father and part of each and every believer that they also should have the same attitude towards doctrine. I am thirsty is a very true phrase which should be quoted from Psalm 69:21, and our Lord has been real 
actually faithful enough to exemplify this by several, several tapes as such even till yesterday, even till today, and even till, our, till when our Lord leads, we are going on to proclaim the information. It is not that just answering back Zakir Naik is a big deal, but the deal is that are we really thirsty for the word of the Lord? As long as we fail enough to know the true importance of isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word to the proper dispensing technique of dispensations, so long we can never understand what it is to really honor the word of the Lord, to really look upon the word of the Lord, to rightly divide the word of the truth, and to give number one priority for that where which you and I have been kept alive. As a bona fide spiritual pastor, teacher, gift, we need to know what it is to really explain the truth with proper dispensing technique of dispensations, explain the methodology with proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word. Without this, the phrase of the fifth one of our Lord, which he proclaimed on the cross, I am thirsty, doesn't have any meaning. The sixth cry, he said it is finished, tetelest tie. Salvation was completed on the cross and now stands finished forever and forever. Therefore, it is not by your works so that you can proclaim. It is by truth of the Lord that you have been given this great privilege. The great privilege that we have been given is believe, believe, and believe. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is very clear to the point of understanding for us. If you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And for by grace you are being saved through faith. It is not of your works so that you should boast before them. Dear brethren, the importance of the fifth phrase much explained for us to know the reality as such what it has to be that first the pastor teachers with whom this bona fide gift our lord has graciously granted to whom our lord has graciously given this bona fide gift have to be taken into utter utmost care and really develop the church and finally the seventh cry our lord said father into thy hands i commit my spirit after this the lord by his own volition dismissed his spirit because he said i have the power to lay down it and i have the power to take it back and then the body of our lord and savior jesus christ was taken down from the cross and placed in the tomb of joseph of armithia by 6 p.m and that is what we can record the next great sabbath which would be followed for them was the feast and they said by overnight if there is anything that could be hanged upon the tree or upon the cross it would defile the entire land what they were doing so they ordered in the latin which is called as fruri crurifagum and then they have taken went with a heavy mallet to broken the bones or the to break the legs of those men who have not yet died but when they came to our lord and savior jesus christ they saw that he was already dead and they were further taken to pierce the side to see whether he was really dead when they pierced the side parts of our Lord, they could really find that he was literally dead. The two deaths of our Lord on the cross is very much essential for us today to note because many of the people cannot understand what are these two deaths and they just go on proclaiming what it might be. The two deaths, the neck cross and the thanatos describing the spiritual death replacement for us as a substitutory one and the other one, the physical death going on to tell to them what it could mean to be really believing in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as our substitute, the only way of salvation. One of the first men, the Simon the Cyrene, who believed upon then, who was a North African businessman, was believed with his two sons, and he said he is the only God. The centurion, the second one, and the thief, the third one. Dear brethren, today as such, even though in, through the entire world people may follow this as a religion or rituals, we thought reality doesn't have any meaning but let us make it as a true meaning and a true fellowship and a true work on our parts so that we can really understand what the things that happened on the cross and why it is that is very much essential for us to note the seven phrases of our Christ on the cross for the fifth phrase of exemplification I am thirsty we have taken several notes so think over this as we shall continue with our regular study in the next step Father, we're grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with through thy word. We pray that, Lord, God, the Holy Spirit lend us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.